Hello, everybody. I'm back with another video uh, for you. This time, I would like to show you um, a problem, a mechanical, a typical mechanical system that um, uh, is consists of a mass, a spring, and a damper. And uh, then I want to put uh, some values in, get actually the transfer function of the system. And uh, plug in some values and show you uh, the three typical systems uh, that we could have the three typical situations, the underdamped, overdamped, and critically damped. And then in addition to that, I, I also want to um, simulate that for you really quickly and show you how easy it is to do that uh, using Simulink. Uh, okay, so why don't I uh, start by showing you um, that we have a, if you have a mechanical, a typical mechanical system which consists of a mass, spring, and a damper, right? And let's say there's no friction. Uh, the only friction that we have is due to the viscous friction of the damper. And let's say we hit this with a force, right? And this force could be anything, could be a sine wave, could be a step function, a constant. Um, and let's say if you um, try to get the differential equation of this system. Now, I'm not going to spend really too much time, really quickly show you that actually the differential equation of this system uh, can be easily uh, determined by doing a quick free body diagram. So a free body diagram of the mass consists of the force and the force, the input force here, F of T, and then two forces coming from the spring, which is just Kx. So in other words, if the, the spring is deformed by X and the damper is also, uh, you know, given that, displacement, the force of the spring is Kx and the force of the damper is related to the, the, the relative speed, in this case, X dot. Okay, and then just doing F equal MA, right? You end up getting a negative Kx and negative Cx dot and a plus F of T equal mass times acceleration. Of course, acceleration is X double dot, right? So, Eventually we get mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx. We're gonna put the uh, f of t on the other side. So this becomes what we call a second order differential equation, right? Uh, which is non-homogeneous because we do have the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is not zero. So what I wanna show you is that if we take the Laplace of this equation, right? You guys know, uh, based on initial conditions of zero, meaning that let's not have any initial disturbance. So in other words, we're not gonna move the mass, the force is gonna move the mass and no initial velocity. So this actually take the Laplace with the initial conditions being zero, we get an ms squared plus a cs plus a k times x of s. And then the Laplace of f of t becomes f of s. And then eventually, uh, if you put this in the uh, uh, output over input, so output being x of s and input being f of s, this becomes one divided by ms squared plus cs plus k. And this is called the transfer function of the system. Transfer function. And this is exactly what I want to show you on the MATLAB. You know, doing a uh, showing you a transfer function block and do a quick simulation. Now, uh, there is a property of this typical mechanical system called damping ratio. Damping ratio is denoted by, typically by zeta, and it's determined by the ratio of the actual damping constant C divided by two square root of Km. And depending on what the value of zeta is, the system is going to be behaving differently. So typically if zeta is between zero and one, uh, the system is called underdamped. And it obviously, uh, the differential equation has its own solution. I'm not gonna talk about 
the solution to the differential equation. Sorry for going back and forth. I'm using two, uh, you know, computer at this time. Uh, and uh, also, if um, we uh, have a zeta equal to one, this is called critically damped. And I'm going to be simulating this for you in a minute. And then, of course, if zeta is greater than one, that's called overdamped. Again, I'm not showing you the solution, but rather I want to show you the, why just a quick simulation using MATLAB Simulink, or this could be illustrated. All right, so we could actually pick uh, physical parameters for which we'll get this value of zeta uh, between zero and one. So it could be an underdamped or critically damped or overdamped. For example, let's say we set mass equal to one kilograms and the stiffness equal to four newtons per meter. So actually the denominator, as you could see, becomes two square root of four. So denominator is gonna be a fixed four. So look, I can pick, uh, let's say if I pick um, for an under damp system, if I pick a damping coefficient of one, then our zeta becomes one fourth or 0.25. I could pick a C of, say four, and my damping equation becomes one. So that's uh, critically damped, right? This is under damped and this is critically damped. And then yeah, I could pick C equal eight, let's say, and then zeta becomes two, and this is called the overdamp. And these are the parameters that I wanna use actually and um, do a simulation for you. And my input actually is gonna be just a step function. And I'll show you where you can find that on MATLAB simulating toolbox, uh, a simple step function with amplitude of one. You could actually have any input you want, and that's the beauty of you know using simulating uh, toolbox. Okay, so now let me switch to. Um, I'm going to use my MATLAB uh, on a different computer, so I'm going to actually stop sharing here and move uh, to sharing over here. And here's our MATLAB. All right. So let me move this guy up here. And now you guys have seen hopefully the video that the basic video that I had on just uh, how we can generate, you know, you know, see uh, display a signal of a sine wave or add two sine waves and display it. If not, I can put the link of that video uh, also below this uh, video on YouTube. Anyways, you can initiate Simulink by just the prompt, uh, just say Simulink, or you can click on Simulink right here, okay? In any case, let's start the Simulink and see what happens. Drink a little bit of water. While this initiates, uh, I have to tell you that my Simulink here on this computer is 2018 version on my Surface. Uh, is a 2020, and in that video, you see I've had difficulty figuring some things, the location of things, and so on. But anyways, this is a 2018 version. Not much difference between the two versions as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, so once the Simulink starts, um, we'll start with the, um, a blank model here, right? So click on that, and you will get a, um, a workspace now and I will show you how easily we can then uh, simulate uh, uh, what we call a second order mechanical system consisting of a mass spring and a damper so here we go this is our model uh, or uh, you know blank model and then as soon as it yeah here we go so the first thing you want to do is to just get the uh, library uh, browser so click on that. And most of the things that we are using are in the commonly used blocks here. You could always search for whatever you want here in this box. And then basically we need a, a transfer function, uh, which we might not be able to find it here. Uh, so what we do actually, I'm just gonna go to the continuous and that's where we have most of the control things here. So I'm gonna click on the transfer function. Remember you drag and you drop. 
So I'm going to bring the transfer function here. Then I'm going to go to uh, sources. The source is the input, okay? So the uh, input, I want to bring a step function, okay? So a step, which is basically hitting it with a constant. And I want to have the magnitude of that equal to one. Oh, we won't have to worry about that right now. And then how could we display this? So our output would be in the sinks as you've seen in the previous video. So that would be just a simple scope. So just drag and drop. All right, let me show you what's going on with the, uh, the transfer function. Remember now, our transfer function, we had a one in the numerator and these are the coefficients of what I showed you here. So for example, you guys recall that if I, let me stop sharing here and go back to our, back to here. And sorry for going back and forth so much. Uh, so I wanna get, um, where is, here we go. So you guys recall that we had <coughs> our transfer function here and I don't know what happened to this guy. Uh, so basically uh, I have a, a source, right? Here we go. It took a while for it to come back. There we go. Okay, so you guys remember uh, the source is actually our input. This is the, uh, the f of t or f of s in this case. And then this is going to go to the transfer function. I'm going to show you in a second. And then our output is going to be the uh, the sink, which is the scope. And we're going to display this. So actually, this is your x of s. Okay, it's going to be displayed here as a function of time, eventually. OK? So let's go ahead and uh, do this uh, using the uh, Simulink. We just, just had started doing this. So I have to do one more uh, switching. Get back to the uh, our MATLAB. Here we go. So you guys recall that in the denominator, if I have a one, let's see, one is the mass actually, m s squared, right? And then the second coefficient is going to be the coefficient of the damper. So I'm going to adjust this. So we said, okay, if we put a one. And the K is four. So let's say apply. Okay. If you open this up, actually, you could see how this will look like. Here we go. That's exactly what we want. S squared plus S plus four. So that's M S squared plus C S plus four. Mass of one kilogram. Uh, damping coefficient of one. And a spring constant of four. Okay, so that would be a zeta of what? Zeta of one fourth. So look, uh, you've, you've seen before, we can connect these. And I wanna show you with the step function, you really don't have to change anything. We're just going to hit this with a step function. Step function basically means, you know, uh, a value magnitude of one over one second period from zero to one second. Okay, so actually we can just run it. So hit the run button and let me run this actually for more than 20 seconds. So let's say we run it for 25 seconds, okay? And we click on the uh, run button and this will take a few seconds. And once it's done, you're ready to see our result by hitting the scope. So this is over 25 uh, seconds and let's see what happened. It's interesting, S is, uh, we have, so we have one S squared, one S and so on. I think we have everything right. One, zero, one, that's fine. This is a one, one, Four, that should look good. And then our scope. 
let's run this. Let me see. Did something happen? Let's just, let me just change this to 10 seconds again. And let's hit it again. Wow, well, I don't know what happened. It didn't like the 25 seconds. Maybe it did kind of die down. So look, this is what we call an under dam system. Uh, if the curve is not a smooth because uh, you are not having enough uh, data points. So you can go under simulation, model configuration parameter, and um, basically uh, pretty soon you will see uh, if you go to data, import and export, and then additional parameters, just make this a larger number. So maybe you want to make it to 1000. So let's apply and say, okay. And let's uh, run it one more time. And take a look at the slope. Now it's much, much smoother. Look, this is an under damp system. See that? So the system is going to settle down at about one fourth. And that's because we're hitting it with a uh, step function. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's um, make that, make the zeta much smaller. So why don't we make this like um, uh, even a smaller 0.5. So here, if I make, make this 0.5, so now remember, based on what I showed you earlier, uh, zeta now is gonna be one eight instead of one fourth, right? So that means it's gonna take longer for it to settle down. So you're gonna have a lot of up and down. What happens now? Look, it's going to take much longer. And in fact, if I change the simulation time uh, to say 20 seconds, say, right, and run it, look, you could see so many uh, peaks, you know, before it's settled on uh, at around 0.25. All right, let's look at actually uh, critically damped. That would be zeta equal one. Remember, that would be when we set this guy equal to a four, I believe. So the damping coefficient is equal to four. So let's make that four. Say, okay, so now you see the trans transfer function is S squared plus four S plus four. Let's run it and take a look. Look at this guy now, look at that. See how it, Again, settling at 0.25. So the final value is 0.25, but look, there is no oscillating anymore up and down. There's no oscillation. And uh, I have some videos actually of the nature of the differential equation or the outcome that you get. And you see why this is gonna be an exponential function actually. The other one was, is an exponential function attached to a sine wave, the under damp case. I have videos on that. If you search on YouTube, you'll find them. Uh, and then let's do one more case. Uh, what about overdamped? So let's make this eight. If you make C equal to eight, then zeta becomes two. And that would be an overdamped case. Let's run it and take a look at the scope and look. Very similar, uh, but you could see actually this uh, curve is a little bit lower. Let's change it to one more time to 16. Let's see what happens to the curve. So we're making it even much, putting basically more friction, more viscous friction. So let's run it and see what happens now. So look, this is going to come down a little bit. All right, so that's an over damped case. All right, uh, I hope you, uh, you like this video. Um, I'll come up with other videos. Uh, I wanna show you the concept of resonance uh, and beat phenomenon, beat uh, concepts with a mass, just the mass spring with no friction, no damper in the system. Uh, soon I'll come with the video like that. And um, as always, if you like the video, please subscribe and we'll have new videos for you. Thank you. Uh, for watching and listening.